Welcome. Don't adjust your dial. Welcome everyone to the Low Five Poly Side Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pickering. That's right. Low Five as in low fidelity, low quality, in your face, messy as can be global news show. Here we're gonna talk about that famous question. What's going on in the world today? I hope everyone's ready. It's Messy Monday. Messy Monday's weekend recap will bring you 10 fast-paced headlines from across the globe and then a piece of humanity to send you on your way for the week. The news, fresh off the press. The following three stories all come from the BBC World section. We begin with a story on China and Australia about libations. Or maybe not. A heads up, China was busy over the weekend. The story, China launches second Australian wine probe amid tensions. That's right, China is taking issue with Australian wine in the country. Previously, it was about the Australian government subsidizing wine, but now it's about Australia dumping wine into the China market, flooding the market, and potentially hurting the Chinese-made wine market. Perhaps these two countries should sit down for a glass and chill, because this messiness isn't the last we'll be hearing between the two of them. Now we move to India and the internet. Prashant Bhushan, Indian lawyer, fined one rupee for tweets. Really now, one rupee for a couple of tweets? And what exactly warranted such a fine? P.S. You do the conversion rate yourself for what one rupee equals lo-fi listener. The story. This lawyer posted two tweets that apparently were, in the words of the court, begin quote, capable of undermining the dignity and authority, end quote, of the country's highest court. And what were these tweets? A comment on a picture and some other vague stuff apparently that made the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court and former ones look rich? I don't know. You tell me what this is really about. Off to the Middle East we go. Iran to grant IAEA inspectors access to suspected ex-nuclear sites. That's right. The International Atomic Energy Agency has been waiting for access to these two sites for some time, and Iran is now giving it to them. This is on the heels of Iran's victory at the UN and the recent thwarting of a renewed arms embargo on the country. We wait with great interest to see what the IAEA's findings are. And the following three stories all come from Reuters World News and Technology sections. Our first one comes back to a topic from Friday, Elon Musk messing with brains. Three little pigs, Musk Neuralink computer chip in animal brains. Firstly, ridiculous headline Reuters, it was only one pig and you're not funny. Secondly, the pig named Gertrude, P.S., who the hell named this pig, had a coin-sized computer chip put in her head and was shown to still be fine after two months of having said chip in her brain. In her brain, mind you. And finally, Musk explains, because of course he knows he needs to, similar to his Terminator and Matrix story we talked about on Friday, that this wireless brain implant could be used in humans to cure things like dementia, Alzheimer's, and several other conditions. Oh, you know what? I think everyone knows where I'd go with this one already. You tell me this time, Lo-Fi Nation. What's your thoughts? Next up, to Japan we go. Japan's Suga to run in LDP leadership race, source says. In case you missed it on Good News Friday, because we didn't talk about it, but on Friday, Japan's longtime Prime Minister, Shinzo Abe, announced he was stepping down from the office for medical reasons. This is a big deal. Shinzo Abe was Prime Minister of Japan for eight years for the ruling LDP. His replacement will be of the same party, of course, but still, eight years for one person, and then switching to another. We wait with great interest to see who steps into the highest role of Japanese politics next. Now, back to China, and still this won't be our last visit there. China demands India withdraw troops from border to avoid escalation. Oh, this is another he said, she said border dispute situation between the two countries. Earlier in the year, conflict arose and multiple people tragically lost their lives due to this dispute. China is saying India needs to back off its turf. India is saying China needs to step back. They're just protecting their own. Take a look at a map, Lofi Nation. What do you think? Is anyone right in this situation? We know it's messy Monday and all, but how about we chill for a minute, China and India? And let's all make it to Good News Friday. And our final four stories all come from AP News International and Science Section. Firstly, we return for an update in Belarus. Strike leader detained in Belarus as crackdown continues. All right, a lot to process here. Let's back up and begin. 
President Lukashenko of Belarus has been president for 26 years since the split from the Soviet Union. Belarus has been an authoritarian state, parading as a democracy with elections, though none are free and fair. During the summer and before, authorities arrested and disqualified the two top opponents in the upcoming presidential election. A new opposition candidate ran in their stead with their support, but Lukashenko won with around 80% of the vote. P.S. No one wins democratic elections that big. The opposition candidate then fled the country. Protests erupted. Leader was arrested. Over 7,000 people have been arrested. Mass strikes at factories began. And this story is about one of the country's top cash-making factories. A strike leader there was arrested by the KGB. And yes, the KGB. Belarus still uses the same Soviet-era name for their secret police. The KGB came into the factory and pressured workers to get back to work and ended the strike. Breathe. And that lo-fi nation is a very quick 26-year history of Belarus and recent events now. It may be very soon that we hear very little about protests about democracy in the country. Give me your thoughts, listeners. I'm curious what you think. Now, moving forward, because we never move on from anything, and we're back to China for the last time today, and of course, it's about Australia again. Chinese-born Australian CCTV journalist detained in China. So what to say about this? Firstly, CCTV is the Chinese central television company that is greatly influenced slash controlled slash censored slash many other things by the Chinese government. The journalist was leaving Australia and returning to China and was detained. Outside of that, we know nothing. No one's talking. It's hard to say if they're being detained for their reporting or if this has to do with the greater Australia-China conflict. But we will definitely be watching and let you know what's up as we find out more. Now we move to the Middle East again. First direct Israel UAE flights land in Abu Dhabi amid deal. This is a big deal. This flight was the first commercial flight between the two countries. It symbolizes the potential for more peace and cooperation in the region. But this is another story we need to wait and see how it plays out. What does it really mean to normalize relations between two countries? We should find out the answer to that very soon as it relates to the UAE and Israel. And a last piece of news to send you on your way for the week. To Poland we go. Warsaw Zoo test effect of hemp oil on elephant stress. Uh, excuse me? Uh, what did you say? Giving elephants hemp oil extracted from marijuana plants to help them relax and de-stress? Interesting. Please tell me more. So, in Poland, at the zoo in Warsaw, the elephants have been stressed lately because one of their family members passed away in March. Lofi poli sci hearts are with you, our elephant cousins. We love elephants as much as penguins. So scientists decided they need a little bit of a pick-me-up to help their spirits. And they came up with hemp oil. You also know this as CBD oil. It's become quite popular in the U.S. lately. They started to give it to three elephants, but have also said they could be using it to give to giraffes, rhinos, and polar bears to help reduce all of their stress. A question, or a thought rather. I get trying to help out members of a group that lost a loved one. But it kind of sounds like you're planning to expand this to, oh, I don't know, the entire zoo? If you have to give CBD oil to most of your animals in the zoo because they're stressed, perhaps you're doing something wrong. I mean, besides the fact of keeping animals in cage, but that's a discussion for a later date for sure. But a final question to you, Lo-Fi poli -Sci. What's your thoughts about giving animals in zoos CBD oil? I'm quite interested what you have to say. And that's a brief snapshot of what's going on in the world today. Stay tuned for tomorrow's episode of Tuesday's Top 10 on the countries with the lowest internet connectivity rates. Always remember that Lo-Fi poli -Sci is more than just me. It's the we that we be. Write in with questions or comments to lofipolysci at planetmail.com. Thanks for listening. Stay safe. Wash those hands. And I'll see you in the next episode of the Lo-Fi Polysci Podcast. Pickering, signing off. <laughs>